Okay, so today I'm going to show you guys how to do a really simple abstract animation. Uh, all it involves is a cube and a sphere. It's really easy and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. What we're going to do, we're going to go to the modifier section. So it's this little spanner and you want to hit this drop down menu and hit add modifier. And you want to go to wireframe. Okay, now you're going to see the uh, cube is see through now and it's only connected by the edges. We're going to adjust this thickness parameter here. I'm going to put it to about, we'll say 0 0.05. Now the next thing is to add the sphere. So we're going to do shift A, which adds a new object. And you want to go to mesh, UV sphere. So now that we have our cube and sphere, we're just going to scale the sphere down a bit. So if you press S and just scale it to wherever you like it, I think we're going to make it quite small. So maybe it could be a little bit bigger. There we go. Now we can start animating the actual object. So if you hit your, if you click on your cube and you come down here, this is your timeline. This is where you can actually start animating your objects. You want to check your frame rate and as you can see, the frame rate is automatically at 24 frames per second. So if you want a five second clip, we're going to set the, um, the end of the frame at 120. Come to the transform menu, which is just this little uh, orange square here. And we're going to hit a keyframe on the rotation parameter. So if you make sure your frame is set to the first frame of the, uh, of the timeline, just, uh, come over. So make sure that bits on, on one, and then you're going to come to this bit and see where it says rotation in your transform settings. Just going to hit this little dot here and that's going to add a keyframe. So we've hit that. And actually we're going to drag this down. So if you click this keyframe and then hold it and then drag it down, you can apply keyframes to all of them. So we're going to, we've now added a key, a keyframe for each axis onto this frame. Now we're going to go to the end of the animation. So just click this and drag that to one, two, one, so that you don't get any jumps when you render it. Um, you want to, See this bit's come green now. You want to change that parameter to 360 degrees so it does a seamless loop. And we're going to do it for each axis here. And I'll do the same again. Just click the top one and drag them down. Now it's set that keyframe for each, each axis. So now when you hit play, it's going to do this cool rotation. And you can see because it ends at 360, it seamlessly loops. Now, what we want to do next is animate the sphere. So I want it to kind of float up and down, kind of like it's hovering. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit, I'm going to click on the sphere so that Blender knows that we are animating this um, object. And I'm going to go to the transform settings and rather than do the rotation this time, I'm going to animate the location and I want to make it hover. So I'm going to animate the Z axis. You can see it's doing that. So put that back to zero and click this keyframe. And now I'm going to go up to 20 and I'm going to, we'll see where that sits nicely. We'll say 0.4. So hit point four on there. Now go to next. You want to go just go on the line on the grid lines of the timeline. So go back to zero on this one. And then hit apply keyframe there. And then once you get to 60, we're gonna go in the negative. So go negative point four. Okay, now hit a keyframe there. And just follow that pattern so it's kind of bouncing up and down. So hit zero. <clears throat> and then back to zero on the last frame. Now when we play that, it should. Now I don't like how that 
I don't like how that last uh, that last little bounce stops in the middle. So I'm just going to adjust the end to 160. And I'm going to just add two more frames. So that's going to go down to minus 0.4. Add a keyframe. And then back to zero. See, that's a lot better now. Okay, and now you notice that the cube ends at the wrong place. So the now the cube is just stopping at 120. Now we don't want that. So obviously, because I extended the, the end of the frame uh, of the animation, I need to um, go back to the cube and extend that. So you just want to go here, go, go to your cube, click on the cube, go to the timeline and just drag that last keyframe. Okay, so now that we have our basic animation, we are gonna adjust, we are gonna set up our camera. So uh, if you haven't made any changes to Blender when you opened it, um, you'll see there is a camera already there. If it's not there, that's fine. If it's not there, that's fine. You can just add one. So you just do Shift A and add a camera. Okay, so what you want to do with your camera is uh, we just want to set it in a good spot. So what you can do is just click on your cube over here and you can hit the tilde key. If you don't know what the tilde key is, it's that wavy key. Uh, I think it's next to the Z on a Mac. Uh, I'm not too sure about PC. But if you just hit that and then hit number three, it should uh, perfectly align it into the center. Uh, now what you can do now is hit command and with, and then just zoom out. And you want to hit control or zero to set your camera where you want it. So that's going to set it where, wherever you are in your viewport. Um, that's a good spot to have the camera. I think, uh, now that we've set our camera, I'm just going to delete this light because, um, we are going to use emission shaders for the lighting. So we don't need that extra light. Uh, so if you just click light, hit X, X will delete it. Now we're going to actually start shading the, uh, the cube. So if you uh, hit Z on your keyboard and then hit eight, or just click here and go into rendered mode. Now, yeah, it's going to be very dull now because uh, the, obviously I've deleted the light. So there's no, there's nothing shining on it at the moment. So the next thing we're going to do is actually um, bring some color to the actual scene. So if you, click on your cube, go into this little thing here. This is uh, the material and you'll see a material has already been assigned to it. So we're going to change this to an emission shader. So if you click on it, go up here and go to emission. Now it's actually the, the actual object is emitting light. We've done that. We're going to pop the strength up to about 10 and Actually, let's uh, let's change our world setting. So if you go here, this uh, this will change the the background and or the actual environment. So we're going to change that to black because we want it to be dark and sort of like it's in the middle of space or something or in the middle of nowhere. You know, we're going to go back to our material. So we've done the cube. Now we're going to do the sphere. So if you click on the sphere, add a new material. And we're going to add another emission shader. Now you can make this any color you want. I'm going to go with blue because I think blue looks quite cool. Uh, we'll go with a nice light blue. And pop the strength up to 10 as well. Okay. See, that's looking quite cool. I'm just going to get rid of these uh, overlays so that we can see it. So we can see how the animation looks true without all these uh, guidelines and things. So just click on this thing here next to the bow and arrow and that will get rid of the overlays and it'll, it'll let you see exactly how the animation is. <clears throat> the only problem is when you click on things, they won't react to it anymore. So it's, it's quite hard to edit when you're doing this, but it's good just to get an idea of what the uh, scene looks like. So now go to your scene settings and we're going to add ambient inclusion, bloom. Now you can see it's glowing. Uh, we want to add 
motion blur too. So if you go into the bloom settings, it's quite strong, you'll see. So we're going to bring the intensity down a bit. And in fact, I'm going to turn the strength down in the cube. So make sure the cube's selected. And we're going to go back to that emission shader and just drop the strength a bit. Bring it down to about, we'll say two. And maybe bring the blue one down a bit. Maybe to eight. I noticed the sphere, it doesn't really look like it's hovering. It's quite sharp in when it bounces back and forth. So we're going to change the animation curve. So if you go to the sphere, click on the sphere and go to this animation, hit A, click T, sorry, press T and change this from constant to Bezier. You'll see it's a lot smoother now. You can really see it's it's floating slowly now. It feels like it's hovering. Just go back and change the uh, the uh, color settings. So if you go to this little bit here, this little camera, if you got if you uh, scroll all the way down, go to color management, and we're gonna change. We're gonna change the look to very high contrast. And we're just going to drop the gamma down a bit to 0.9. Okay, so that's pretty much done now. And it's it's looking it's looking quite cool. Uh, obviously, there's more that can be done with it, but it is just a simple tutorial. Um, so only thing left to do now is to render it. So if you go into this little section here, uh, this is where you basically set the output settings for uh, the render. So first thing we want to do is make sure your file make sure the file directory of where you're saving the the, uh, the export is in somewhere that you can actually find it um, I would advise not to leave it as TMP um, I would so I would just click on this little folder here and just save it wherever you want I've got a little folder in movies uh, I'll go movies blender 2020 and we'll just say simple simple ethereal cube and then hit accept now when when you render it it the your your file will be saved there um now after you've done that you need to go to this file format and click fmpeg video and we're going to change the container to mpeg4 and we're gonna leave the Kodak at, as it is, and we're gonna select perceptually lossless and leave everything else as it is. You don't need an audio codec, that's only if you're syncing music to it. And the only thing left to do now is to actually render the animation. So go up here, hit render and render animation, and just gotta wait for it now. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, as you can see, it is a really simple animation, but it does look quite cool, especially when you put it in VDMX and start blending it with other animations. You can have a lot of fun with that. Um, if if you felt like you got value from the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also, check out my Instagram page for more of my um, more of my artwork, and also I'll be uploading some music on there as well. I uh, also got a website if you want to download the um, the project files. Um, if you need them and also if you want to download the uh, the actual full render and just want to have a play around with it that's cool uh, thanks for watching guys enjoy